Hello, awesome viewers. Welcome to AC Studio. I guess my subscribers know really well that I had a review on the Ultramarine Skeleton, and I was very disappointed with this figure. You can go back to this video and have a look at my um, criticism. As you know, I wasn't happy with it because for the price you paid, there was a lot of issues with this figure. So since then, I did not buy any Primark um, from Joy Toy. Roughly four months ago, when Joy Toy announced the release of this Space Roofs Lemon Rust, I kind of like, oh, that looks really, really good. I actually think this one looks better than Gilliman. And since I've started collecting the uh, Space Roofs 30K figures, so I'm saying to myself, look, you know, why don't I have a crack at it? It is a risk, but at the same time I say, look, you know, this figure, I have to have it. I think it looks really, really good. But recently I have watched quite a few videos on the review on the War Master on YouTube. And it seems like everybody actually got issues with the War Master. Some of them have loose joints or broken items. So I'm a little bit worried on this figure. And I sincerely hope that this figure lives up to my expectation. So if you look at the packaging, you can see the packaging, it comes with a very nice, you know, cardboard box, very, very sturdy box. And it's a different packaging as compared to your typical figures. So you can see Jota put a lot of efforts into packaging the Pine Ranch, you know, so yeah, they done pretty well on that. Um, and let's open it. All right. So you can see the inside, it is nicely packed with a plastic cover on it. So let's put this out first. So, and they also put a plastic covering on this so that you reduce the friction between the uh, figure and the, uh, the clear plastic here. So, presentation looks really good. So generally, this is very common kind of like packaging from China. As I know, there are a lot of like other toy companies pack their figures like this. So, even from unlicensed product, which they always do that to, to make this look more valuable. And they give you this clear base, but the base. Uh, if it's a pie march, this should give me a better base on that. This is a special character, you know, a better base should be provided rather than just a general base, you know, for small figures. Doesn't matter, I never use a base anyway. All right, let's have a look at the accessories before we look at the figure. So it comes with lots of accessories here. You can see there's so many items here, which is much better than the Gilliman, at least. So the first thing we look at is the Sword of Balanite. This is an ancient sword has been passed down from warlords. The space wolves call this the Mel Knight, which means Fang of the Wolf King. It is a powerful weapon that gets darker as it kills, turning from silver to deep red and then to black. No armor can withstand its strikes. The sculpt and the uh, color and also the look of this sword looks really, really amazing. Silver edging with the uh, metal car in the middle and you can see the really nice sculpting with a bit of you know recessed lettering on this part of the sword and then you have this roof face um, you know sculpt and this very nice spikes and if you look closer you can see there are horizontal recess lines on the handle as well and in my opinion this is probably the best looking sword of all the Jotun figures that I got here and oh my favorite one here the axe of hell winter Look at the sculpt on the axe. Look at all this beautiful sculpting and also the highlighting, the silver highlighting on it. Looks really, really nice. And look at the back as well. You got a different look to it as well. You got a space roof emblem on it. And what I really like is it also got this random kind of like uh, damages on the edge of the axe. You know, the uh, scratches. Look at that. That's and then you got these details in the middle and also the detail on the uh, handle and it got these very nice leather straps on the uh, handle as well and got all these raised details on it as well spiky bits at the uh, bottom of the handle of the axe look at that, that's pretty pretty nice probably one of my favorite it is Russ's favorite axe made from a teeth of a giant kraken that he killed it is incredibly sharp and enhanced with a disruption field Making it powerful enough to split a tank armor. God, it's gonna split by a Land Raider into two. All right. <laughs> and then we got a very nice pistol, but it is not an ordinary pistol. It is called the Scorn's Splitter. It is a customized bolt pistol made for us by Vulcan, another Prime Arch. It is a gift of respect after a hard fought battle. And Russ, and Russ highly value this and Vulcan's friendship. So you can see the details are really, really nice on this. And you know what? The revolver, it can actually rotate as well. But that is a good kind of like uh, the play features, better than nothing. 
So it looks really nice. And look at it, it got a hole on the muscle. So everything has been done really nicely. I actually tried to find a place to put the pistol, but apparently, um, Joe Tai actually gave you a gun sleeve, which I believe you supposed to put the pistol in there. But the problem with this is, it is just a mold. I can't even actually put this in there. So it's just one piece of soft plastic. Oh, I mean, I just don't understand your know, Joto's logic on this. I don't understand why they give you a decorative feature, but for the price you're paying, you're supposed to get yeah, something better than that. See, why don't you just put more efforts in making this a plea feature, you know, so that I could put a gun into this, you know, make that a functional element, a playable element, you know, not a decorative element. So you can see everything is half hearted in a way. And next is a shield. Uh, I couldn't find the name of the shield. If it got a specific name, please let me know. The sculpt looks excellent. And um, you can see the very nice, you know, uh, decoration and the recess of letters, words on the shield. You see, it looks really nice. And got a very nice metallic color. So you can see it looks very nice under the light. Uh, there is no detail at the back whatsoever. So you can see there's nothing in there. And if you compare it to the Grey Slayer shield, you can see the size differences here. This shield is a little bit larger than the Great Slayers. Actually very similar in size, almost the same. They both have very nice details. I cannot really pick which one is better or not, but I actually think uh, both looks really good, to be honest. Yeah, but the back, as you can see, uh, this one, consider this an expensive figure. For the detail you get, that's not good. Even though there are not enough details, but you can you know, see, you know, see more on this. You got more stuff on it, right? You expect a little bit more than that. Uh, good thing is this handle, you can actually move around. You can take it off if you put this shield uh, onto the figure. So let's pull this hand off and then we put the shield uh, on this hand. So after you put the shield on it, you look at it, it seems like proportionally it is a little bit too small compared to the figure, right? So I, that is why I think, you know, how come they are very similar in size? I think these should be a little bit bigger. And also, like what I said before, there's nothing in the back. So, so sometimes when you hold it up, hold it on the side, so you, you just see the back, just no details, just plain. So that is why I think the shield can be better. But don't forget, this may not be the fault of Joy Toy. This could be the original design, original or original size of these uh, of this Warhammer figure, right? And also, you have a small axe, which I don't know what is the name of the axe. I couldn't find any information on this axe. Uh, but again, this axe, you can see the details are very nice. You got the uh, scratches, the damages on the edge, um, and also kind of like timber look uh, handle. There's no highlighting or any wash on this little axe. But, you know, it's just a very small axe, so it doesn't really matter. So I think it looks good already anyway. And one last accessories for the weapon they have is this little decker there. That is a decker, actually comes together with the figure. Um, and I think the detail looks very nice as well. And also it comes with this decker sleeve. You see the sleeve looks really, really good. A uh, bit of, you know, uh, highlighting on it. Really rough highlighting though. But otherwise, it looks really good. And then you put the, uh, this one just fall off. I need to put the glue on it. Just glue it back together. And anyway, I'll just put it there for now. Um, yeah, and um, then you just put it in there smoothly, nicely. Right. And then the other accessories they gave you is the head. I'm going to go through that together with the details of the figure. And otherwise, the rest of it are just extra, you know, exchangeable hands. So you can see in this figure, there are so many accessories that is given to you. But don't forget, this figure is actually the same price as the Gilliman. Doesn't have as many accessories as this figure. So this is really, really good. Let's have a look at the details of this figure. Have a look at the head first. The head sculpt is very, very nice on this figure. I guess one of the reasons why I got this figure is because of the look of this figure. The head sculpt is really, really detailed, very, very realistic. And the colors also, yeah, pretty good as well. Look at it, it's so nice. It done really, really well. You can see, and you can see every single teeth there is really well defined. And the eyes are really, really well done. It looks straight. And also you can see the sculpt of the hair. Looks so nice, so realistic. And look at that as well. Look at that detail, very nice. The ears, the eyebrows, you know, like you know, every single line in there is really, really good. Um, I do think this is by far the best head sculpt I have ever had uh, for all my jaw toy figures, right? See the uh, you know, weathering also looks really good as well. They don't use the dark kind of like brown, like the space roofs figure. They always use kind of like a brown, dark brown color. 
But this one, they you know use more like a light brown color, which matches pretty well with the blonde hair, right? All right, let's have a look at the other head sculpt. It is not an angry one, but it's just a normal look to it. So you can, so you see here, it looks equally as good as well. So you can see the colors, the sculpt, everything is very nice, very consistent, right? They both look the same in terms of colors. That is really, really amazing. So if you look at the Gilliman, you can see Gilliman is very plain. You can see the eyes aren't as good as well, not as realistic, and um, it looks dull. You know, it doesn't look as smart as Ross. Look at that, and that. Which one will you choose, right? So which one do you like? I definitely love this, right? Next is the armor of Lemon Rust. The armor of Elavaga. A special armor wear by Lemon Rust during Horus Horacy. The exact origin of this armor is mysterious, but it contains device that absorb heat and energy from the surroundings, creating a deadly cold aura around Rust. The chilling effect is why it is called the Elavaga meaning a wave of killing frost. And the sculpt of this armor looks stunning. I have no criticism, nothing on this armor. I actually think this armor looks really, really nice. Maybe because I personally really like this kind of overlapping, you know, uh, armor look, which resembles medieval kind of like armor, you know? And the back is a bit plain. You know, the back doesn't have any armor pieces. Most of the pieces on the front, unlike, you know, these, for example, like the Terminators, you know, like they have it in the back as well. Like that, and that one, you can see, nothing. Maybe just because, it's just the nature of the design. Uh, I love the belt though, sculpting of individual pieces on it. Looks really, really good. And all the spiky bits, the, uh, you know, the rivets, all painted in silver. Very nice. And also look at the uh, shoulder pad as well. You can see all these are done really nicely. The only thing they haven't done though, they have no black shadowing around the edge of the armor. With this, you see on here, on the edge, they have black shadowing. Black shadowing on the uh, major kind of like uh, areas. A uh, bit of black shadowing there as well. There as well. But nothing on this shoulder pad, which I don't know why. I think it looks a little bit plain without any you know, black shattering. So you, if you don't really think about it, right, you don't you know, really see that. Uh, you can see the space with emblem. Uh, it has highlighting. It has a lighter kind of like a white highlighting on top of this red roof face, but it doesn't have any wash on it. So you can only see the raised area really well. And also there's no brown wash on, on the rivet or on the gold area. That is okay. They actually put in the um, silver highlighting on the edge. You can see it on the very edge of it. You got the silver on the edge, a bit of silver there as well, a bit of silver, you can see on the edge silver there. Yep, so they have done the highlighting, which is good. All this got a silver highlighting on it. I really like this you know, decoration piece here. Teeth, this decoration piece is on soft plastic, you can see, yeah. Um, yeah, and this chain, soft plastic as well. Did put in the black wash on there, no brown wash on the teeth though. Uh, yep, but otherwise, yeah, pretty good. Very nice sculpting as well, decoration on the forearm, black shattering as well. And they got this like medieval look, leather straps uh, and the shoulder there as well, there as well. Um, they actually put in the, uh, you know, um, highlighting, highlighting on the edge. And also looks like they put in a little bit of uh, black wash on it. See the uh, recess letters on the, uh, and also the waist area, the mid torso area. Very nicely sculpted lines, horizontal lines with these lines in the middle. Yep. Very nice. Look at the belt. My god, this belt looks really good as well. The silver highlighting is too strong, I guess. Uh, so it doesn't look gold on the edge, but still look good, right? And you can see the roof sculpt and also highlighting with the silver. And also on the belt, you can see the crystal piece decoration. Very nicely done. Very, very nicely done. Look at that. That's nice. And on the side, there is the roof. I don't know what you call this kind of stuff. Usually you call this a fur or something like that. The skull, the sculpt looks really, really good. Look at that. So, and got the hand as well. <laughs> um, yeah, the painting, not top notch, but good enough for a toy. Um, yeah, so all the colors, details are stunning. So they have a darker gray in some of the areas and then they have a lighter white highlighting on it. Um, I think the backpack looks good. The sculpting looks good but the thing that can improve on is the head of these roofs, right? Yes, you know, they put in the highlighting, the silver highlighting on the gold, but because it's such a you know, big piece of gold, right? Um, a bit of brown wash or copper wash on the gold will look you know, much better, making the uh, shape 
bit of defined visually. So this is kind of like, you can see if you look far away, right? It just looks like a plain gold piece, right? In order to you know, address this, you can actually you know put in the wash to make it look better. Uh, the rest of the uh, backpack, uh, nothing really special. Details just ordinary. They should paint black in the holes as well. And lastly, the cape, which is made of the wolf fur or wolf skin. Um, all these items here, all this decoration, are on separate piece, which is on solid plastic. So that's very nice. So you know it is not just you know, a mold. All comes together as one. Look at that, pretty good. So as collectors, we always like to see things like that, right? And also this little strap, which I think you're supposed to put, I don't know, perhaps the X in there. No, it cannot go through it. That one perhaps. Yeah, that works. Hmm. Uh, maybe, I'm not too sure actually. And the sculpting of this wolf skin or wolf fur looks really, really good. Um, and you can see there are different contrasts of colors, so the darker gray, lighter gray. The colors come with a logic. You know, this is race area, race areas, and this is recess areas. So, George Hart done pretty well. So, it comes with a logic of how they actually want to do that, right? So, it does highlight its you know, uh, dynamic effect. So that's pretty good. And uh, now they put in the uh, lighter kind of white highlighting on top of it. Uh, if you've got a black wash, I think it looks much, much better, right? So I'll, I think I'll do that later. So that sums up the armor details and the finishes. And in terms of articulation, the articulation is actually quite similar or almost the same to the Gilliman, right? So I don't really have much comments to make. What makes this figure unique is it has this extra hinge on the shoulder joint and also on the ball joint, so you can actually boost around. So you can actually stretch out the hand like this. So this joint first appeared on the Gilliman. So it is actually on that one as well, you see. Uh, Space Wolf here got the same detail. You can see the same detail. So and now, you know, Russ using the same detail. And on the legs, you've got an extension kind of like connector that you can actually move this down like that. And then you can actually kick up the legs very, very, very high because of that. Same detail as the Gilliman. The joints are very, very tight as well. So it is tighter than the Gilliman, right? So I'm happy with it. So on a knee joint, you can do more than 90 degrees. So, and then you may be able to do that as well. Up to you because there's two you know, joints in the knee joint. So it depends on what geometry you want to achieve or what angle you want to achieve. So, but you cannot really do more than what I'm do, doing here, right? Still, more than 90 degrees. For a uh, you know, big figure like this, that's pretty good. But otherwise, there's no surprise on the, uh, the articulation. It's the same articulation they use on all the figures. Have a look at the size comparison between Lima Russ and the other 30Ks space roof figures that I got here. All right, these are the general comparison in detail. So you can see the height between the uh, typical Space Marine size and the Terminator and Demon Russ. Yep. But when I was looking at Gilliman, I did not realize it is now shorter than Lehman Russ. And it is taller by, well, almost one centimeter. Well, logically speaking, shouldn't be the Gilliman uh, at the same height as Lehman Russ. So interesting, perhaps, we need to wait for a new Gilliman to be released under the 10th edition of the uh, Games Workshop game. Maybe a 10th edition, they will release a new figure. Don't know. And then Jota will release, you know, a new figure. <laughs> but anyway, you can see, I definitely think uh, Lehman Russ looks much better than Gilliman. My final verdict, this Lehman Russ figure is definitely a must get in my opinion. Basically for my experience with the Gilliman figure, I basically lost trust with buying any joy toy large and expensive figures. I took the risk of getting the Lehman Russ and I think I made the right choice. Very happy with this figure. The armor, the head sculpt, you know, and the rest of the figure looks really, really good. And the accessories are amazing. You know, I really love the accessories. Consider the number of accessories that you got for this figure. This figure is really for money. Uh, if I really want to be stringent, I would say, you know, if they give us the gun sleeve for the scone splitter and also adding a bit of copper wash onto gold, then I think this figure will be pretty close to perfection. So in the conclusion, I am very happy with this figure. So in a way, it gives me the trust and confidence on the latest Joy Toy large figures. But honestly, this figure is rather simple. It's not a you know, complex figure, not as complex as War Master. Now comes to the end of this video. Uh, I'm sorry, this video has been a bit long, but there were so many things to review on this figure. Uh, so it takes a while. And if you watch till the end of this video, I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Give me a bit of support by liking the video as well. And I'll speak to you in the next one.
Thanks for watching. Bye for now.